Good afternoon and welcome to the November meeting of the Traverse Area District Library Board of Trustees. We're, we have some work to do this evening on the budget hearing and on some uh, further uh, changes to the policy. And uh, so let's get started. The first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise and join me in saying the pledge? <sighs> I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag. Of the and to the, republic to the republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And if uh, the trustees present, if there's someone who would like to make a motion to approve the agenda. I will do so. Carol makes the motion to approve the agenda. Is there support on the right? Support. Yeah. Support. Yeah, supports. All right. Uh, with the agenda approved, I have the pleasant uh, duty to uh, read an acknowledgement. Um, and I don't know, it would, uh, was this from the policy committee? Was anyone like to explain? I'm sorry, go ahead. We should do a roll call on your vote because Susan oh, is. Oh, thank you remote. for reminding me, Victoria. That Susan on the phone requires <laughs> us to do a, a, a vocal vote. So if you would call the roll, please. Okay. And this is for the approval of the agenda. Uh, Westcott? Here. Vickery? Yes. Sakeezer? Yes. Rogers? Yes. Jones? Yes. Resident? Yes. Yes. All right, we now definitely have a formal agenda approved. Um, would anyone on the policy committee like to share some enlightenment as to the discussion that brought this land acknowledgement to us? Uh, uh, I, can, I can report the conversation we had uh, at the last meeting, but I don't know the origin of the conversation. I don't know where that came from. Uh, but uh, the idea is um, in general, this is actually a, uh, an idea that's percolating in a lot of different places right now, but the idea is to actually formally recognize the um, indigenous heritage and people who um, predated the, our institutional work and our community here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that acknowledgement uh, is something that the policy committee um, wanted to forward to the board and recommend that we actually uh, read an acknowledgement that it provided to us by uh, a tribal person, Holly Bird, uh, and uh, read that into the record. And uh, we can talk about this in the uh, later in the policy committee uh, report if you wish. But um, there's there's an implicit question here about whether. Um, it would be uh, something the board would like to do as a matter of routine to incorporate it into the functioning of the board to um, acknowledge um, indigenous heritage here. I think it's a great idea during this um, Indigenous Peoples Month, which I think we celebrate. And I would like to explore going forward. I don't know if it's just this kind of um, reading or others that we might expand into, but anything that will draw our attention to our, histor our history and where we are in this uh, great state. So without any further ado, let me uh, read this reading. But, but in committee. This is a land acknowledgement reading. We stand here on Turtle Island, our precious earth, this beautiful land of Michigan, cherished and maintained for generations by the Anishinaabe people. We wish to recognize those whose traditional land we are gathered upon today as the land on which the Traverse 
uh, the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians have resided for thousands of years. To recognize the land is an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory you reside on and a way of honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. It's important to understand that the long-standing history that has brought us to reside on this land and to seek to understand our place within that history. We thank the Anishinaabe people for sacrificing for us to be here today. Thank you. All right. Um, is there any public comment to be had? Would you please go to the podium, state your name, township, and whatever ideas you're bringing to us. Heather Brady, Tattle Marketing. And in the interest of accessibility, I'll just say that I have blonde hair, glasses, a rose-colored cardigan, and a white shirt. Um, and first, let me say how wonderful it is to see Carol here with us today. And secondly, um, I would like to uh, bring a prop, so I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Breaking for props. Oh. I must think it is very difficult. Aww. <laughs> oh, isn't it nice? The light parade is this Saturday, and Tattle will be in the parade, and we would invite anyone who would like to join us to walk with our group. The board, the friends, um, any members of our library community are welcome. Just contact me, and we'll make sure that you're all lit up and ready to go on Saturday. <laughs> so thank you. With lights, yes. On uh, Saturday, I'm Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, uh, any further public comment? Let us uh, go on. I would like to make a motion um, that we open up the 2022 budget hearing. Uh, is there anyone that would support that? I support. Support. Uh, Mike has supported it and I guess it's my duty to make an introduction of the 2022 budget. So I'm going to leave all of the numbers, fig facts, and figures in the very uh, trustworthy hands of our director and let her begin the overview and details. Okay. We need, we need a roll call. For the motion to open up the meeting. Okay. Yes. Thank you for keeping us on track. I think oh, we ought to talk about giving her a raise. I, okay, We're good. Really I will. doing I'll double duty. <laughs> Would you please call the roll? Yes. Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Pekeezer? Yes. Rogers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Sullivan? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'll just kind of walk you through the packet. I know you've already read it, um, but I'll try to hit some of the highlights of our um, big plans for 2022. Um, so basically, you know, we want to maintain all of our services and really support the, um, the goals of the strategic plan. And so you'll see that um, that was reflected in some of our overall budget environment um, that we um, listed out here and some of our special emphasis, which includes um, working with the schools to uh, provide services to schools and library cards for kids, which will be um, which will be big in 2022. Um, it's something that I think has um, endless rewards and also is very rewarding to all of us here where we work. Um, we will continue to uh, support our technology, knowing that it'll probably be a little different in 2022 with disruptions in the supply chain, but. Um, Scott has been shopping um, like crazy lately, so hopefully we won't see any disruption in services. He's really thought ahead on this one. Um, and then we're hoping to get some, uh, some, ma some maintenance needs done around the library. Um, you know, just we continue to age and see things that are needing service. So um, that's kind of it. And we're going to start our bookmobile, so hopefully that'll show up sometime. That's bogged down in the supply chain. Um, and... Hopefully it'll show up and then we'll be ready to 
um, tackle that service. Um, so you'll see again, we had another Headley rollback um, as um, values increased higher than the Headley amount. So we used to be 0.9292. We are now 0.9202 of our millage, which is originally 1.1 mils. Um, so you'll see what the actual proposed dollar amounts here are. Um, total revenue will be $5,750,871. Um, we're estimating penal fines to be going down. Um, as with everything else that we tend to get from the government, um, we're just being really cautious. It also has to do with marijuana becoming legal and a few and a new law that moved or a new law that had some penal fines attached to it that they diverted from libraries. So I know Michigan Library Association and all the libraries in Michigan are heavily lobbying our legislators to not do that. Um, penal fines are constitutionally allowed or allotted to libraries, so hopefully that'll change. Um, the local stabilization fund, that law changed in 2018, that continues to decrease. So you'll see our uh, millage went up, but we've estimated lower income amounts for some of our other revenue streams. Personnel costs rose about 3.1%, and we're seeing more people using our health insurance, so that a lot that accounts for some of those costs. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, we put money away last year to MERS, um, and you'll see all the years we've done that. So uh, we heard from Tony last week, we're in a really great position with our unfunded pensions. Um, probably some of the other things that you um, notice is in our supplies, so our auditor did ask or recommend that we change capital um, investments from $500 to $5,000. So on the budget, that looks a little different in terms of it looks like our supply budget went way up and our capital budget went way down. And that's just merely changing where that money goes to. And it makes it easier for us to account on, to keep track of for our audit because everything under $500 has to be on that list. We're now that it's only things under $5,000. Um, so that'll be helpful. We've, we just had some modest estimates for income and overdue fines because of the, um, the policy that you all implemented, which I think everyone here is happy to let go of that money in order to bring people back to the library by removing those fines. Rental income is estimated very low also because we just don't know. And, you know, if you're watching the numbers at Munson right now, it's not looking good. So we'll see where that goes. Um... Other than that, Deb, did you want to add to anything? That's kind of it. Uh, the last page is a big picture of where we stand for next year and looking forward to it. Anything? No? Okay. Um, this is another time, another opportunity for the public to comment on the budget. If any would like to make comments, please move to the podium. State your name and township and let us know what you're thinking. Seeing no one jumping up and racing over, I believe um, the next item would be to discuss and uh, make a motion for the 22 budget resolution. Uh, so I'll open it up for any trustees. Would you like to make a, dis uh, a comment or a discussion on this uh, proposed budget? Joe, this is Susan. Please go ahead, Susan. Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm wondering, I was pretty impressed with the report from Peninsula with the direct mail campaign that uh, brought in over $30,000. And I'm wondering if we have any uh, plans to do that. We don't right now. We, tip, we haven't sent out a direct mailing. We're gonna put something in the newsletter. Um, in the last week, or so we've gotten about $20,000 just in donations of people off the street. Um, a longtime patron walked in and handed me a check for $10,000. Uh, we just got another check for $5,000. Um, someone donated stock to us worth about $2,200. And then another um, patron, oh, you don't want me to tell any. And then there's <laughs> also a little secret from the friends. Um, have, we done a, have we done a mailing like that? We, did, we don't, and... I, I don't remember ever receiving, I get yeah. peninsulas, but I don't remember receiving. Yeah, we just don't, not that's something we do. We do get donations like this, though, so we figure we'll put something in the newsletter, and um, it's 
pretty expensive to do a big mailing like that. We have a huge list of patrons, so we kind of let people donate when they want to. So, Michelle, how much does that add up to then? I didn't hear the first number. Um, total about $22,000. Okay, great. Any other questions, comments? Well, then I would like to move on and make a motion. Uh, resolved that the estimated revenues for 2022 result in the following total amounts available for appropriation. I guess I can read all these numbers. Um, tax levy, $5,292,947. Uh, other taxes, 30500 State aid, 147464 Grants, 10630 Fees, services, sales, and rentals, 62930 Overdue fines, 15000 Penal fines, 154900 Interest and dividends, 5650 Contributions, 30850 uh, We expect zero reimbursements for a total uh, available to appropriate $5,750,871. Further, from that total available, the following appropriations are made. Personnel services, $3,451,879. Supplies, $780,500. Other services and charges, $1,458,942. And capital eight outlays, $59,550. Totaled, that uh, figure is surprisingly $5,750,871. So this motion is being laid on the table by me. Is there support? Support. 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 Uh, around. I'm going to say Susan this time. And is there any further discussion? Victoria, would you mind calling the roll? Okay, starting with Westcott. Aye. Vickery? Yes. Caesar? Yes. Rogers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Sullivan? Yes. Uh, by my total, there were, what, uh, six ayes. Aye. Motion passes. We have a budget for 22. And I want to thank uh, Michelle for all her hard work and Deb uh, for putting this together. Um, it looks like a pretty solid plan, and I'm ready to get going on it. Hey, can I say I appreciate that comment, Joe? I mean, the, the questioning the budget is, is difficult to do because the work is done you know, in hands that should, or where it should be done. But um, we should all be, you know, very grateful for the hard work that goes into this from lots of lots of sources. And the proof of how well that's done is the audits that we get back that are glowing and um, the, the plans that these budgets represent are well thought out and, and, uh, and populated by people with passion that will bring them to a it's, it's not a, just a pro forma thing. It really is. We start, start what we do. Mm -hmm. Hello. So Thank thanks for everyone. Hi, yeah. uh, Joe. Could you hear me? Oh, you can now. Yes. Okay. Did, did you have a question, Susan? No, I ju just wanted to make sure I was included in that vote. Okay. I got disconnected. Oh, I believe we got you before you dropped. Okay. All right, then let's move on and mm -hmm. discuss. Uh, the minutes from our last regular meeting on October 21st. Are there the minutes to be accepted as printed? Carol is making a motion to accept the minutes as printed. Second. Uh, Mary Lee, is that? I saw yeah, your hand up. Support. Mary Lee supports that. And as soon as uh, we can, we'll call the roll. Double checking. Oh, wait. We need to close the, yeah, the budget hearing. Oh, yeah, she's on it. What? <laughs> so before we have that, let's have a motion to close the budget hearing. 
I was just so excited to be here. <laughs> so moved. Uh, so moved. made it. Uh, Susan supported it. And Victoria will ask Jeff. Okay. Roll call. <laughs> Westcott. Aye. Um, Vickery. Aye. Pekeser. Yes. Hodgers. Yes. Young. Aye. Sullivan. Thank you. That's Thank you, one and all. We have closed our budget hearing. And we were discussing approving the minutes. I think we had a, a motion to approve and support. Now we can call the roll for that. Oh, who were those? Um, let's see. Carol made the motion, and I supported. Mary Lee, okay. Mary. Thank you. Let's start with Westcott. Aye. Vickery. Yes. Pekeser. Yes. Rogers. Yes. Jung. Aye. Yes. All right. This is a lot of fun. This brings us to our most interesting part of the meeting: the <laughs> reports and communications. And leading off that will be our director, Michelle. Okay, great. So I um, just wanted to point out, if you've read my uh, report, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And we have completed our uniform chart of accounts. And I want to say a big thank you to Deb on that. It did go to our auditors. And it'll put us in the perfect spot. It needs to be adopted, adopted by December 2022. Uh, but uh, we're way ahead of schedule. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Deb about that because she's worked very, very hard between the budget and the uniform chart of accounts. Um, and then on the last page is just some information of, about the Northland Library Co-op and kind of what they do for us. Um, that's the cooperative we belong to. Um, besides those, I wanted to let you know that um, I know we didn't get the um, Library of Michigan ARPA grant, but a nearby library did, Kalkaska. And we, I have to give a huge shout out to Scott Mori. Um, I know he's not here, but he was like the the madman behind the scenes helping John get those numbers, which will provide um, uh, Wi-Fi access in downtown Kalkaska. So um, Scott's a pretty quiet guy, and he won't brag, so I figured I'd brag for him. I was pretty proud, and, and John in Kalkaska is beyond excited about the opportunity this provides for his community, and a lot of it has to go to Scott. So... Wanted to let you know about that. And last night we started, or not last night, we started a collaboration with Newton's Road and Habitat for Humanity. So last night I went to the, um, uh, I forget what, what they call it, but basically an opening of a house where they give the house to a person for Habitat. And we provided books and craft kits and nice. library information. I get goosebumps thinking about it. It was really a special event. Yeah, yeah it is really a beautiful thing. and. Um, and I think a house is a house until you put books in it, and then it's a home. Uh, but it's probably people, too. But either way, they were really thankful. And it, it's something we're working on t with the friends. And um, I know the Peninsula friends want to help. And I think um, we're trying to get all the library's friends because they'll be doing houses all over the region. So to make that connection with the kids and the library was really powerful. And then Newton's Road will be providing STEM kits for any kids in the house. Um, that they get to keep, um, but also we brought some from the library last night that they could play with. Um, and then finally, I'm working with some retirees and um, the Career Tech Center to create a bookshelf for the family if they want it, so they'd be able to walk into their home and have a bookshelf with books and, and a STEM kit on it. So that was pretty great last night. Um, and then I just wanted to remind if anybody is interested, Grand Traverse County is holding their interviews for the two positions that are open for the Tattle Board. Um, Joe is being interviewed at 1.30 and then a person at 1.40 and another person at 1.50. So um, three people interviewing for two spots. Um, and that's on Monday. The other people? Yeah, um, Brittany, June, and I'm going to mess this up, Ms. Whiskey. Mizuwiski, it's a very long name. Um, I can't, I'll forward this to everybody. Um, so that woman, June, is at 140. And then Paul Deo, who actually came in and is, and is wanting to volunteer at the library, he's applying for Parks and Rec and Tattle. So they're interviewing him for that. But um, he was great to interview, and he's just interested in getting involved and loves libraries. He's also involved in Tarte and Norte. So we'll see who they pick. Um, and then the final thing is I know you guys had talked about wanting to do a board retreat in February, 
And if you still want to do that, I, I do have someone that Heather gave us that d gave me the name of someone who did a retreat um, for beta. She's on the board for beta. So I figure we can bring this to the policy committee and talk about it if you want to still do that for February. So that's everything. Okay. Does that need a motion that we want to? Or? Um, no, I think as long as you guys all agree that you still want to look at that for February. Okay, yeah. I'll just keep, I'll bring some names to the committee. That's it. All right, thank you, Michelle. All right. Um, departmental reports, Deb. Oh, can I point out too in the departmental reports, you'll notice that some of the departments have already started addressing the issues. Um, they're either highlighted or underlined relating to our strategic plan. So I know Heather did that in hers. So um, we're gonna keep doing that so that every month you'll see how we're moving forward on our goals. Hello, good evening. Um, I don't have anything really stupendous to say outside of what was in my report. I think it's more of a, if you have questions tonight, um, we really were, we're on track for the year we're 83% of the way through the year, and we're only 80% of our budget, so we are doing fine so far. Um, I know Scott is spending money yet, um, but the, the, the departments are cut off from spending as of Monday, so um, hopefully things will slow down a little bit now. Um, the books have been coming in, so hopefully that um, slow down is through and we'll get in all the book orders before the end of the year that have been placed um, But pretty much that's all I have Hopefully with the new lights going in. We'll also see a break in our utility budget mm -hmm. Do the trustees have any questions? Mm -hmm. So I have a quick question. This is Susan. Mm -hmm. Susan, please ask your question. Okay, so Deb, on the items that are 50% or less spent, we think that we'll be able to do that by the end of the year. On which line, Susan? I couldn't hear you. Um, anything at 50 or less, so there's a few items. Um, percentages in the percentage of budget. Some of them, it, it may not change. Like the, if you're looking at the revenue side, like the overdue fines, we may not be anywhere close to that by the end of the year. Um, trying to look and see what else is, oh, the interest and dividends, no, nowhere near meeting our budget on that. Um, on the expense side, we are pretty good as far as like, um, any of the books or media type stuff, any of the materials for the library, the departments are encouraged to spend all of that money. So you can pretty much bet that that will be used up. Um, some of the other items may not get that far. Education and travel is under 50% and we budgeted hoping that people could go to conferences this year. And of course that didn't happen. So. No, that won't change at all. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much done for the year. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a way we could highlight that information with that kind of narrative, maybe at the bottom. Um, that might be helpful, but that would probably won't change much. The COVID supplies, any of those. Right, yeah, the COVID supplies were pretty much set on that. Um, if it's anything like, insurances, things that we pay in one lump sum, those are, are done for the year. Um, like the uh, building insurance bonds, things like that won't change. The ones that are gonna change are your um, supply items, the materials, general supplies, your building maintenance is gonna change probably. And then under the equipment and software line because Scott is trying to spend some of that down yet, so. Okay, thank you, Deb. You're welcome. Yep. No other questions? All right. Uh, 
Member library reports. I think we have a full staff here. Mm -hmm. Fife Lake. Hi, um, I'm Kendall Spratt. I'm the director of Fife Lake Public Library. Um, and this last month, we've just really been focusing on getting all the new staff trained and um, them knowing their role and their position really well. Um, I'm really concentrating on staff training and making sure that they feel really confident. Um, and that gives me, frees up time for me to be in the school and out in the community, which is a goal I have for the next year to do that even more. Um, and we've been working really hard um, in the schools, maintaining those relationships. And we're gonna be doing some staff training with the teachers and administration come the new year. We were gonna do a little bit sooner, but teachers are pretty overwhelmed right now. And we don't wanna be something that overwhelms them. We wanna be a resource. And um, so they renew their contract with us next year. So we've been doing story time and I've been going into the middle school and high school, um, doing story time with the fourth and fifth graders, as well as going into classrooms and um, speaking with the students about different resources and showing them different um, also Mel resources. Uh, there's a neat little thing called Novelist online that the students can kind of put in some books that they like and it will spit out some different recommendations. Um, I really wanna help the teachers with those reluctant readers and um, just finding a book that they'll love. So that's been a big focus for this year, um, this last month and also our end of the year financial budget budgeting and things that I'm all new to and Michelle and Deb have both been helping me out um, a lot with um, just encouragement and also just resources and all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate their help. Trustees, have any questions? Kendall, what is this, your total staff now? How many people do you have? I'm um, including myself, there are 10. And how many are new? Um, five of them so yes 50 turnover. Mm -hmm. yep and the project you're working on in the schools i i heard you say renew the contract mm -hmm. so is this a contract actually a contracted service that you're providing for them yes it is we have a one year contract um, we signed uh in the spring of this last year and they pay us a, a fee a monthly fee and that goes towards uh staff staffing the libraries as well as any kind of resources we need um, not necessarily books because they had books in there and so I, um, but it's more like the barcodes and different um, like wrapping materials we need for the books and um, things like that so uh, that's where that budget goes to and where we are in the school between the four theory um, middle and high school and the five lake elementary 14 hours a week between the two and is it the same staff person every day, every day or for those 14 hours? Yes, I go into the middle school and high school every Wednesday and then as needed with the teachers as a, I have a little more flexibility in my schedule. Um, if they need a specific uh, training or something like that in their classroom, I'll go in in the mornings a lot of times um, or in the e afternoons to take the students the books that they've requested. Um, and we have two staff members Jean Smith and Alyssa LaShawn, who go into the um, elementary school every Monday, and they do story time with eight different classes, and they also um, allow students to check out books at that time. Great, I think that's probably one of the best programs that Fife Lake has come up with since uh, I've been there. Thank you. Getting, We're... Engaging those students yeah. at the Very valuable. school Thank and you. high school. Thank you. And interlocking. Hi, I'm Jennifer Tomman. I'm the director at Interlocking Public Library. I'd just like to start off and say that we're very thankful for all of the support that we've received from Cattle. The services that you provide for our patrons, we wouldn't be able to do without you. So we're very thankful. We just wrapped up our ALA special uh, grant for um, it was focusing on addiction. It was a four-part book discussion with um, an additional panel discussion that we did. It was a very tough topic. It was well attended. We had over, over 20 people 
uh, come to our book discussion. Um, very eye-opening, and you know, I just had no idea that that was going on in our community at, at that level. So we've uh, wrapped that up. We're going to start it again in February of next year. Um, we just wanted to take a little bit of a break. We also had a money management course that was provided by MNCAA. That was a five-week course. It taught our patrons money management, anything from student loans to financial planning and uh, re debt reduction. Uh, we are going to start up our Make a Gift Junior again this year. Each week, and starting after Thanksgiving, the kids will come in, get a nice little craft kit, take it home. They can make a little gift for somebody that they love. And then also, we received a mini grant from Michigan Center for the Book, so we get to give out book bags. We are going to prepare about 30 of those, and then we have 30 additional picture books. So. Michelle, if you need any books for Habitat for Humanity, let, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I will, for sure. <laughs> and that's about all. Oh, and we're going to have a harp and viol, uh, violin concert in December by the Hollands. Any questions? Thank you, Jennifer. Joe? Uh, yes, Susan. I just want to say both to Kendall and to Jennifer that I'm really impressed with their ability to read the needs of their particular communities and uh, provide services and programming that really meets that and, and incredibly creative leaders. Just thank you. Thank you, Susan. I'm Vicki Shirley. I'm the director at Peninsula Community Library. Um, I told you last month that our audit was complete. It was submitted by the state. It, to the state, it was a clean audit, and the state did issue a qualifying statement. Um, it is available online at michigan.gov if you're interested in looking it over. Probably good um, bedtime reading. Um, our annual appeal letter, um, as Susan noted, is going out. Oh, it actually went out November 15th. It's taking a little longer to get to households. Usually it is in, I know, it's usually in the next day, but with the delays in mail, it is taking longer. But it was mailed November 15th. It goes out to all, snail mail to all Old Mission residents. We'll put it out as an email as well. That, since we've um, moved into the building, has become our biggest fundraiser. Um, as Susan noted, last fiscal year, we generated $31,000 in local gifts to PCL. We're on a different fiscal year, I should make clear, than you are. We're on a July 1st um, through June 30th fiscal year. Our second biggest fundraiser is the Boathouse Dinner. Um, until last year, um, it was at the Boathouse. This next year, I was given, this fiscal year, but next um, calendar year, I was given the option by Doug Hosh um, to do either in-house or curbside, which is what we did last fiscal year. Um, I debated, but I think with the numbers at Munson, um, we're going to go curbside one more year. Um, we did well with that last year. We made a little over $10,000. Um, it makes over double that when it's in-house. But I'm excited. People supported it. Um, and the meal is always good, even as takeout. Um, a patron donated an exquisite quilt, handmade. It's valued at $700 to hang in the children's area of the library. And um, it's the geographical area that is Old Mission with um, the, the heritage cherry farms actually marked with a small piece of cherry fabric. So it's beautiful. It's hand quilted. It has waves where the bays are. Um, I was told that there's a, there's a map directly across from it over the fireplace. It's a plat map, an original plat map from way back when of the peninsula. And I was told it was framed locally. Um, I found out today that it was actually framed by a patron in indigenous maple. And he has offered to frame the quilt in the same, the same wood, um, which is native to Old Mission. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am about that. And the story walk exhibit signs um, were installed by Old Mission Associates. They look beautiful. There are 15 pedestal frames, which means no more yard signs, <laughs> which I am happy about. Um, we get a lot of wind there, and sometimes they would take off um, down the street to some of the farms across the way. Um, still to go in the children's garden is a reading tunnel. Originally, it was supposed to be made out of willow plants, but we've tried three times through Old Mission Associates with no luck. 
So we're actually going to put in, um, a, it's a piece of playground equipment. It's quite pricey because, because it's playground equipment, it has to meet all of the codes that playground equipment needs to meet. It's $10,000. And I actually am pleased to say that as of last week, I have a donor for that. So very excited. I think the kids will like it. It will go in where the, um, the um, xylophones are. There's some flower xylophones. So we're excited about that. The bricks also went in. The friends were going to end that, but they decided to make that an annual project. Um, people love those. The contract for the drainage plan on our five and a quarter acres has um, been awarded to Old Mission Associates. They've donated a lot to the library and they actually were the lowest bid. They came in at $20,000, um, which is the cost of managing all that rainfall coming down from the hills. And um, they may start this year depending on the snowfall. Um, it will include French drains, rain soils with native plants and some other um, landscaping to divert that water to the drainage pond. What else can I tell you? We're working with um, the Old Mission Peninsula School on some collaborative programming. Um, they had their pumpkin walk, which used to be our program through their woods. They light um, the pathway with lit pumpkins with storytelling afterward in the amphitheater. Um, they did the pumpkins this year and um, we provide, which Wendy provided the storytelling in the amphitheater. So it's, it's fun to continue that with them. We're also working with them on a, an all school read and that will happen in February. Um, I don't have anything else unless you have questions. Trustees? I do so want to- I have a quick question. Yes. Susan, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I'm wondering if there's any documentation, like maybe even a little film about what you're doing, Vicki, with the um, drainage I'm just thinking that maybe other places, not necessarily libraries, could really benefit by the innovative technology you're using on that. That's a very good idea, and I will bring that up to the Landscape Committee. Um, you know, we have drawing landscape drawings that are quite detailed, but I like the idea of the video, so we'll definitely have to do that. Okay, thank Any you. Uh -huh, thank you. Um, I do want to thank the title board and especially um, your finance committee, finance and facilities committee. Um, the negotiations on the contract were incredibly cordial and respectful. Um, Joe and I go way back on those and I, it was really a feel good experience. So thank you for your generosity, but mostly thank you for your kindness. Thank you. Just a word about the contracts for all the members. You know, as everyone I think in this room realizes, this is how we make the Traverse Area District Library a district uh, in supporting the member libraries that were really there before we began as a district. Um, we, uh, I would say we incorporated them into the district, but really they were there before the district was started, they led the way for us to do it. And I think in delivering library services out to those members, or at least the funding to provide the services, we're able to really provide those communities with what they need as far as library services, you know, that may not be able to be designed and, and carried out from a central location like this building, but they're out there listening to their patrons and uh, responding to what the patrons want to want to have. So I, I think it was a, a, a job well done by all the negotiators, the member library negotiators and the, the uh, Tattle negotiators. And I think it was done with a uh, common theme or a common vision to provide library services in this district at a level that this district deserves and we're, we can be proud of delivering. So that's my speech. Why don't we move into the committee reports. Finance and facilities are up next. They had a meeting on November the 2nd. What happened there? Well, Joe just said what I was going to say that um, it was a pleasure to serve on the committee, um, the member committee. And I'm just delighted that we have contracts with all three member libraries it was great working with their boards. Two will be ratified tonight, and one will be in Interlochen will be ratified in December. So that's just great news. Um, I want to thank Deb and Michelle for the 
uh, the budget report, and they really did a great job of explaining it to us. It, it worked well. We spent a lot of time talking about it. Um, Michelle uh, needs mention that uh, contracts are up for the insurance companies, mm -hmm. and you need an RFP report. Well, we something we you would like to get. Let me ask her, could, so if we want to go out for RFP, the committee agreed we should do it because our insurance carriers have, we have not gone out for RFP in a long time and Deb and I learned in our class, you should go out. It's been at least 10 years, but I didn't know, do I need board approval to do that, like a motion or? That's what I was going to ask you. Because the committee approved it, but we didn't put it on the agenda as a. As a thing, can I just look it up while you yeah. guys go on? And then yeah, I'll go ahead. Up. Should I continue with other th with facilities? Mm -hmm. um, Michelle talked about a long range plan for uh, improvements to the library and things like that. Uh, we'll discuss that next year. Um, we've had trouble getting the final plans unless we've got them now from the architect for the roof. And it looks like we may have to postpone the roof for another year because of the shortage of materials too. So um, I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. Finally, um, Michelle would like to give a Christmas party to the staff at Tattle. And she'd provide the liquor and the refreshments. And she'd like permission to do it. So do we make a motion for that? Yeah, well, actually, I've decided not to do it because the COVID numbers are so high. Um, like when we were going to do it, I was the numbers weren't as high. But now that Munson has moved to cold red, and the numbers at Munson are higher than any other point of the pandemic. I don't really think it's probably the most prudent do, thing to do is to hold a party. <laughs> so I was not going to, I was going to tell so you. you're not I'm going to do it now? Not going to do it. Because we'll have families, we'll have unvaccinated people. It, it just, you know, I just think like, I use the standard of if it was across the headline of the paper, how would I feel? And that wouldn't feel good if someone got sick. So I think it's best if we wait and we can do something in the summer. And so thank you, though. Or you could always have it outside. Yeah, we could. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be as festive. <laughs> I'm the only one here without a mask, but I want people to know that I'm fully vaccinated. <laughs> I've had the booster shot and I had a COVID test last week. So oh, good. OK, good. <laughs> I'm clean. Yes. Yes, I think. Okay, so we, yeah, maybe if you could make a motion for the. Um, okay, I move to go for our Give Michelle permission to uh, investigate um, uh, for, uh, proposals for the insurance. To seek bid, or yeah, to, to request for a proposal. Yeah, the okay. cause. So Carol has made a motion. See. Uh, Giving Board. authorization to seek permission to get proposals. Support. Mary Lee is supporting that. Uh, is there any further discussion? I think we're ready for a roll call vote. Okay. Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Pekeezer? Yes. Adgers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Yes. Sullivan? Counting six eyes, the motion is passed. Michelle now has the authority to find some cheaper insurance. All right, thank you. Remember, you get what you pay for. <laughs> That's a good idea. All right. Um, policy and personnel, they too had a meeting on November the 2nd. What happened there? Uh, it was a <clears throat> very productive meeting. Um, uh, the fruits of that meeting are largely before you and old business. There's some items there for us to take up, so I won't dwell on that, those matters. But um, a couple of things to uh, highlight. Uh, one is the, the discussion that we had about the uh, land acknowledgement, which we uh, did earlier. I didn't, I didn't want to um, uh, curtail opportunity for anyone else in the subcommittee to to speak out about that. Um, the need to recognize, not the need, but the desire to recognize uh, through the land acknowledgement the, the Heritage Month was um, a, a motivation for a conversation that uh, was, uh, I think, uh, one that will come 
I don't know if it has to come back actually as a formal recommendation, but there was agreement in the policy committee that we should explore developing uh, a land acknowledgement, you know, um, statement and incorporating it as a matter of uh, operating procedure. Uh, and so that conversation, I think, will will take back up and, and come back um, uh, to the board with um, uh, more on that later. Um, the, the nature of that acknowledgement, um, the language, the authenticity, the spirit, and the meaning of it, uh, we were um, all uh, we were all quite aware of the fact that um, uh, we're not interested in doing a, a pro forma kind of uh, public performance of sensitivity to indigenous people, uh, but that we would like the library to begin to express through that acknowledgement its uh, awareness of uh, the location uh, of this place uh, in a community that existed long before we did. Um, so um, we, we hope that we can uh, come back and do that in a way that people would agree would agree with. So more on that later, I guess, is what I mean by that. Is, is that fair yeah. representation? We're going to continue to work on this. Yes, on yes, right. Um, <clears throat> the other uh, item uh, that um, is outstanding, and I wanted to alert the board uh, to this in a, in a particular way, um, the uh, director evaluation is uh, on the agenda for, it will be on the board agenda for December, and in preparation for that, we, we have been talking about that uh, over the last couple of meetings, and um, the, the desire is to um, continue to review that process so that it becomes maximally useful to both the uh, director, Michelle, and whoever the director is, and to the board, whoever is on the board, <laughs> uh, and sort of aligning the goals uh, and the expectations and the way that we review those, um, in aligning those things in ways that maximize the, um, op the potential to discover and um, uh, respond to opportunities, uh, address uh, uh, risks or, um, or issues that are uh, apparent uh, to all and the result of the conversation. So the nature of that conversation is what uh, we, we've, been, we've been talking about. So there are two levels to it. One is um, um, Michelle and, and the staff and everyone contributed in the strategic plan to a, a conversation that uh, that means we will continue to work on that. So this is part of the strategic planning process. I mean, the implementation part of it to this conversation I'm talking about. In the near term, given the fact that we are um, duty bound to, to do uh, an evaluation this calendar year uh, in preparation for the beginning of the new one, in December, I want you all to know that you'll be getting from the personnel committee um, the, the self-evaluation that Michelle has prepared and, uh, and delivered to, uh, to us, and uh, a survey asking for board input and feedback on that with the prompts, a couple of things added to it that of asking the board to consider um, uh, uh, sort of aspirations or interests in the how to make this conversation and this interaction um, uh, productive and useful for everyone, right? Mo more as, as much as possible. Uh, so just heads up about that. Um, we're still sort of working on that that instrument. Uh, we're going to need to turn it around once, but it'll be coming soon. Uh, and the idea would be to give uh, you enough time to respond to it, but also give us time to collect that information and, and summarize it and, and bring it back to you as part of the, the director's evaluation on the agenda in December. So I mean, it's, it's, there's a month here where the, all that stuff has to happen. So just heads up about that, you know, but, okay. So um, any other comments, anyone wanna mm -hmm. talk about that? Nope. Okay. Um, and the other items, as I said, are, are on the uh, in old business, so no need to belabor those. We'll come to those as we get to them. Well, did Mary Lee want to say something about the consent calendar idea? Yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about that in December. Oh, at the committee. Yeah, that's yeah thank you. Back, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. right. That's part of the, there's a bylaw review 
topic that we're not bringing forward yet because yes. uh, we're considering some procedural, structural uh, things that, um, including a consent calendar and so on. But we want that to be informed, um, an informed conversation. We're not quite not quite there yet. So, okay. Well, it sounds like a good idea. I look forward to hearing how we arrange it. Um, and also to the trustees, make sure Mike doesn't have to call you to get your survey back to him. <laughs> what? Um, Joe? Yes, Susan. Um, I just wanted to ask um, Michael or anyone on the committee, is the February board retreat something that will now be under policy? Mm, I'm not I'm sure, not sure I'm of the not connection sure. that you saw. That. Well, if it'll be a, a, it'll be part of the calendar. It'll be something that would be regular. Oh, you mean will a, will a retreat be on a formal calendar? Yeah. Oh, on an uh, annual basis. Is that what you're looking to to say, or? Right. That's my question. Mm. I tend to think of the. Well, I, we haven't talked about that, uh, and I tend to think of that okay. as a procedural and operational decision. I mean. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a policy. That's an operating um, um, option. It could be incorporated, I suppose, into some, you know, the formal agenda of the board over time. But we don't have a. Mm -hmm. you know, we have a. We have a form for the agenda of the meetings, but not for board operation over the course of the year. So. Well, maybe it's something that you guys can discuss. Yeah. Well, well, it's a it's a topic that certainly, Susan, so that's a topic that can, in mm -hmm. fact, be taken up. It just has not been at this point taken up as, mm -hmm. as that kind of question. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. I think that's all for the policy and personnel committee. Our next uh, report will be from our friends. And Donna is here. I want to start with um, Michelle's good news. Um, <laughs> we, the library and the friends, worked with a couple who is fairly new to Traverse City, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they donated $3,000. And they donated it through the friends so that the library could buy they want to spend $1,000 on adult craft kits and another $1,500 for Library of Things materials. And then they themselves wanted a $25 membership to the Friends. And the rest could be used at the director's discretion. So it's going to be funneled through us to the library for what they want. And they brought it to our last board meeting. And as I was talking to them, um, I believe they're interested in continuing supporting us. Uh, it's through a trust, and the trust requires it to go to a 501c3, I believe, which is why it's being filtered through us rather than directly to the library. Um, our membership committee has realized that we do have some people who have not renewed their memberships yet, so we are going to be sending out some notices to people who have not renewed their memberships to the friends. Uh, we will be having, cross your fingers, everybody. We're planning on a sale sometime this spring of some materials that uh, Sight and Sound has gotten that are uh, collector's media items. So that would be a special sale of, of these special media things. And we would have some publicity about that and try to send it out to people who collect that kind of materials. We're hoping to have a regular spring book sale and a spring media sale, followed by a fall book and media sale. So keep your fingers crossed. Like many of the reports that have been coming out today, we're just not quite sure. Um, we are accepting donations of books now. I know last month we were not. Uh, we were crowded. We're still sort of crowded, but we're managing to squeeze things in. Uh, we are helping to supply some books to the Habitat for Humanities houses. And hopefully we will be finding the likes and dislikes and ages of the people moving in so that we can have it age specific and so that they will enjoy reading them. We approved our 2022 budget and I wrote down either 
cautiously optimistic or optimistically cautious. <laughs> um, most of our fundraising comes through in-person book sales, so we're hoping that works out. We do have someone who is going to be a new board member to take over uh, Tyler Bevier's place. Tyler moved out of the area. I think they moved to Minnesota. Uh, the new member is going to be Judd Barclay, and he and his wife have moved to town. They helped out. They volunteered for the book sale. He was very active in the Friends where he came from, so we're really excited to get some new and different ideas from him. Um, lastly, uh, we had two people who came to our last board meeting who did a lot of the heavy lifting, literally heavy lifting, at the last book sale. And they are suggesting to us, with the amount of time and effort it takes to get boxes of books down here, and then boxes of books that have not sold back upstairs that we might consider extending the length of the book sale a day or two. So we're looking into that and seeing if we can get the room for that length of time. Um, I think that's it. Trustees have any questions for Donna? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. So, yes, Susan. So I do. Oh, I knew you would. <laughs> Okay, Go ahead. Donna, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, Donna, if the friends um, have revisited the idea of having any kind of store in the library? There was a store. We don't have the volunteers to do it. Okay, so that idea hasn't been... Yeah, there, there had been a store down it. under the... What was it called? Under the stairs, Michelle? We're lucky to get the volunteers that we have, and um, it, it just... I don't even think that store made that much money either, did it? It's in a sort of hidden place. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think we can move on then to old business. And item A under that is the electronic communication for trustees policy. That's it. You want to oh, I can go ahead. Um, so, you know, we're just barreling through our policies and we're trying to get them all in the same font and everything and also just tidying up. So um, electronic communication was 1.51. We wanted to renumber it to 1.2. And we just added a little clarification in here about the email account and updated it since uh, it had been about 10 years since we'd updated it. Um, and that's about it. Michael. Is there a motion to be made? Uh, yeah, we would move adoption of the revised uh, policy, including its renumbering, uh, would, would to be now 1.2 electronic communication for trustees. And Mary Lee supports it. Jeff, did you have a question? No, I was no. supporting. Okay. Yeah, um, just not, this would be a general comment for all of them, but one of the things I want to go on the record about is I really appreciate the, the work that Michelle and her team are doing going through. This is, <laughs> this is terrible grunt work. To, to slog through the bylaws and the manual to try to get the language, mm -hmm. you know, to align uh, because you know it gets, you know, it gets assembled as, mm -hmm. you know, just a series of acts and and go back and kind of scrub that together. It, it doesn't end, by the way. I mean, you know, but the fact that you're doing is is to be uh, uh, lauded. Appreciate that work. Thank you. All right, I That's believe all. we're we're up for a, a roll call. Okay. Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Yes. Keezer? Yes. Adgers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Sullivan? Six eyes means we have updated and changed the uh, number on the electronic communications of trustee policy. Item B, if we could, is the district library ethics statement. Yeah, this is another one, too, where there's not a lot of changes. Uh, in fact, no changes, <laughs> I it, think. It, it is worth uh, yeah. sort of providing the, the backdrop for, for this uh, revision is, um, there's not much of a revision at all. It's really more of a, uh, a commitment to incorporate the ethics statement into the, the, the rest of the documents that um, guide uh, board members' um, understanding of their obligations and so on. Um, 
the ethics policy when it was passed was intended to be part of the, you know, uh, something that uh, members would adopt, adapt, and testify to, if you will, and that they would agree. And so all that all we've really done is recognize uh, that it's connected to the conflict of interest policy in a way. And so we wanted a signature to include to be included that recognize the adoption or acceptance of the ethics policy or ethics guidelines as well as the conflict of interest. So it's really more of a tightening together and a recognition that that signature is is both things and we would expect uh, board members to to read and be aware of what they're obligated to. So there will be a form that we will sign to say we agree or we have at least read the statement and uh, the conflict of interest as well. But we did that before. Oh, this is an annual event. We did, but the, the ethics, the ethics, uh, the, the, that, that was the conversation. Well, by signing the conflict of interest, we're tacitly accepting that. We just want that to be explicit so that we, it's not just out there as a thing that was put into the manual but has no you know, it's not connected at all. So we're just trying to make that explicit. It's just tightening it up. It doesn't change anything. So is there a motion? Uh, I would move, uh, I'd move that we adopt that change. Support is moved. Jeff is supported. Uh, any further discussion? Victoria, would you mind calling the roll? A uh, Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Vickieser? Yes. Rogers? Yes. Jones? Aye. And Sullivan? Yes. And six ayes means that the policy change has been adopted. And we can move on to item C, 1.8, remote participation at meetings. Um, so. Yeah, this was a formatting one again, but I, I think it was just good to bring this forward to talk about because um, I've looked and nothing's changed. So as of January 1st, 2022, the only reason you can attend the meeting remotely will be for military duty. Um, that's just the way the Open Meetings Act was set up. I, I think there's been some introduction of some changes. Um, I can't remember which uh, House representative offered that, but as of right now, this is the law. Um, so just... We're just we just wanted to change the formatting of it, but um, there you go. That's okay. <laughs> there, someone's worried about you. Um, so that's that, right? Yeah. There's been there have been some proposed inter introductions and amendments, but nothing's happened yet. Yeah. And even if they do pass them and extend it, this it does. This still remains in place, right? Well, this does, but we also did include language in here that, or such other period is established. So if, I mean, theoretically, depending on what the amendments are, we might not even have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Is there any other questions? Is there a motion to be made? I move adoption of the revised uh, policy 1.8. Support. And Mary Lee supports. Uh, Victoria, would you mind calling the roll? Uh, Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Keezer? Yes. Rogers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Sullivan? Hearing six eyes, the policy has been changed. And uh, I think we've talked about it enough. Let's move on to new business. That would be the Fife Lake public library agreement. You have had a chance to look at that. Are there any questions in its regard? I will make note that the Fife Lake Library Director left before she even knew whether we agreed to this. <laughs> it's good to see you here. Yeah. It was, yes. All right. Um, can Carol. I make a motion? Yes, you can. Uh, Except their, what they, we that we agree to this uh, agreement. Agreement. Yeah. <laughs> is there support for Carol's uh, motion? Support. Mike is support. Uh, and Susan supports it. Uh, Victoria, would you mind calling the roll on the Fife Lake 
member operating agreement. Okay. Uh, Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Keezer? Yes. Odgers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Sullivan? Hearing six eyes, we now have an agreement with the Fife Lake Public Library, which I am happy to say. Mm -hmm. And we will sign this at some point mm -hmm. and then move it on to uh, Fife Lake. Is that how it will work? Um, Fife Lake already signed it. They approved it at their last board okay. meeting last week. We so we just need your signed copy. Yep. Okay. So we just need your signature. Excellent. And uh, the next one we'd like to talk about is the Peninsula. Uh, community Library Member Agreement. But I'd like to move that we accept that. Daryl has moved. Second. Jeff has supported. Victoria, would you call the roll? Uh, Westcott? Aye. Vickery? Aye. Pekeezer? Yes. Odgers? Yes. Jones? Aye. Sullivan's? Hearing six eyes, the agreement has been agreed to from the Tattle Board's perspective. And we eagerly await uh, Pen Peninsula. Yes, uh, well, let us not too quickly pass over the good news that this, that this process was was uh, cordial and, and productive because uh, they're not all that way. Uh, they have not been. So uh, it's it's really, it's really, really gratifying, really good. So we just have one more. I'd like to add that it's a 10 year agreement. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's important. Makes it really nice. Yeah. So yeah. We won't have to go through this again mm -hmm. for 10 years. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, Mary Lee. So the only one that's outstanding right now is Interlochen? Interlochen is still outstanding. I did get an email this morning um, from Pat Thompson, who says that uh, they have accepted the agreement. Oh, good. Um, okay. And that uh, I told her we would be you know, voting on that as soon as we get that notification officially from them. And it, I expect it will be in the December meeting. Yeah, we just we forwarded the red line agreement to them. Right. So, and Joe, could, could we also? It's kind of a comment more than anything else, but just to underscore and support the comment you were making earlier about the the program, uh, the programming that is coming to communities through these libraries, of which are part of the the, the district, and um, it really is remarkable I, the school partnership program the ala program on addiction the the all school read program the storytelling is one of the the reports that we heard tonight right um these are these are terrific things and i i would like to for us to consider ways in which we might be able to operate board meetings in ways to actually be able to spotlight and highlight and have conversation with the member libraries about what they're doing and what their aspirations are. Uh, maybe that would mean we do less um, uh, reporting across the board, but maybe we could, you know, highlight, you know, give a library an opportunity and the board an opportunity to to interact and learn uh, about them uh, about what they're doing. Um, it's just a, a possibility for the way that we we we. Um, um, we do that and maybe take a little burden off having to every every month produce a report that um, I don't want to take any burdens off of them. You don't want to? <laughs> but I want to point out that. Oh, you're being funny. Uh, oh. No, I wasn't being funny. I, I Behind that word. mask, he's I like I like those reports. But yeah. in any event, <laughs> what I was trying to get to is that we do go out to the member library. We have gone out to the member libraries in previous years. Right. Uh, yeah. COVID caused us to s suspend that for a while. But I think that would be an excellent time for the member library to whom you know, we were coming to visit to give them a, a forum to d talk about their, their library and what they want to do and all that stuff. You know, they, we'd have to get some buy-in from them, but that might be an excellent place to do oh, yeah. that. There are lots of ways to do it. I, I just, I, there's, it, there's so much exciting, good community building work going on through the libraries, we should we should be thrilled about that all the time and do everything we can to uh, to celebrate and support it. So, I agree. Yeah. And I, I agree. The we used to do that. I mean, we used to be, at least to be able to go to the campuses. Well, it was never really dedicated to them telling to them. their story. We came there and used their building to have a meeting. We just moved this format to there. And what I'm saying is, this format could mm -hmm. we could adopt a more focused you know, interaction, at least. Sometime during a year, you know. 
Point of so order. So I have a comment too. All right, wait a minute, Susan. Point of order. Did we vote on the Peninsula Agreement? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Susan, make your uh, comment, please. Okay. As a, I just want to tell the rest of the board, and Carol knows this as a member of this negotiating committee. We all really benefited by uh, Joe being a longstanding board member and his prior experience and his leadership in this particular uh, situation of these three negotiations was just superb. And I, it was such a pleasure for me to work with Joe and Carol. So I think the board really needs to acknowledge jo uh, Joe's leadership. Are you going to tell me to be quiet now? Yes, in fact, I'm turning off the volume. <laughs> patting himself in the back, but it's well deserved. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. That was kind of you to say. All You're right, welcome. we're at that portion of our agenda where the public is now invited to make another comment. Seeing no one rush to the podium, are there any trustee comments? I do, Joe. You have to wait. Did you have one? No, okay. I was going to move to adjourn. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> That's my job. Okay, I, I did want to. I did want to make a trustee comment for a couple of things. First, because I'm in LinkedIn, I happen to see Scott Morris uh, celebrated 11 years mm -hmm. working here, and I just wanted to recognize him and apologize to all the other people that I'm not recognizing that celebrated. <laughs> Uh, anniversaries only because he was on LinkedIn and that's where I saw it so, <laughs> so congratulations to Scott and uh, like I said uh, I've watched him for eight years and he makes it look easy so mm -hmm. we're we're very blessed with the talent that we have in this building and uh, the folks that are providing service to our patrons so thank you very much and the other thing something that was um, really a surprise although I don't know why it would have been. We are in the presence of two of Northern Michigan's influencers. <laughs> the, the, exactly what is the title? Um, I think it's Influential Women in Northern Michigan. Yeah. Info, I could have told you that many years ago that we had some of the most influential women in Northern Michigan in this building because that's who we are. But I wanted to recognize Michelle and Susan Rogers, our trustee, for both being named as an influential woman of Northern Michigan. And we all know it's true, so congratulations to the both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you George. And are there any other trustee comments? I have a couple things, Joe. Please, go ahead. Okay, well, first of all, I want to... Uh, tell Heather how much I appreciate her audio description. I think uh, as we've moved in the direction that many other groups have with some of our items today, like the land recognition, that the audio description is, is another one of those um, in, and very important. So I, I appreciate that. And I also want to let folks know that um, very good friends of mine were at uh, Mary Budinsky's memorial service Sunday at the Chelsea Library and I took some photos of the materials that were given out for Michelle. Um, so if anybody wants to see those, um, but it, they really honored her and her husband was there and her other family members. And um, it's reported it was very, very lovely. So I think we can, we can share in that with the Chelsea Library. And then lastly, I just want to really thank Holly Bird and the Policy Committee for um, including in our land statement the sacrifices that Indigenous people have made. Um, two books that have been really important to the library, the book Stamped and also Letters to My White Male Friends, which were also at the National Writers Series, really speak to the fact that we can't acknowledge the land without the sacrifice, and including um, Indigenous people perishing. So I really appreciate that um, kind of echo many of Michael's comments today about that. That's it. Well, thank you, Susan. That's a good note to end on. And now, Carol, do you have something? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there support? Second. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Yes, we do. <laughs> Westcott. Acclamation. Aye. Vickery. Aye. Aye. Kieser. Yes. Hodgers. Yes. Jones. Aye. And Sullivan. Six eyes, we are now adjourned. Thank you very much for coming and enjoying our trustee meeting today. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too, John. Yeah. Yeah.